Hi guys, Antonio from Adventure Africa and I'm sitting here in the Mahindra Bucky, the Karoo Spec 4x4. It's got nice big mud terrains on it, it's got all the lucky accessories and with me I've got my favorite two I see, Tony Yeo from Adventure Africa Training and Tours. Tony, I can you yeah. trust. I trusted you to drive this Bucky through all the ruts and struts and all those things. Yeah, and was it so gemak? What's your impression? I'm actually really impressed um, with it. It's obviously a, a pickup that's it's got a place in the marketplace that, that, and there is a need for it. There's obviously a few features and benefits that it doesn't have like some of the other luxury cars if you want to call it that. But uh, all the features that we have, the safety stuff, it's all here. But let's talk, talk specs first. So this is the Karoo Dawn 4x4. It comes with the... It's the Mahindra Hawk D140 Karoo Dusk 4x4 S11 pickup. Oh my soul. Okay, there you've got it. He knows his stuff. 2.2 mm -hmm. turbo diesel engine. 2.2, yes. Um, it's got the six speed automatic gearbox, 103 kilowatts, 290 newton meters torque. Newton meters. It's got a mechanical diff lock, the MLB2, which we felt was. It worked. But in my opinion, it's similar to when you do not have a diff lock. On, on some of the other vehicles yeah. that works with the traction control you get you go through the motions but because it loses traction it needs that split second or two sometimes um, just to realize what's happening and then everything kicks in and then you go so you do lose momentum sometimes yes yes definitely you, it asks for a lot of commitment yeah so if you commit if you commit it to an obstacle um, you've got to be prepared for this so you can't just climb in the sky and, 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 and think everything works once you've committed to it, once you've realized how it works, it, it starts making sense. But you need that commitment, because the moment you 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 you, you, you have it or you sneak it, then something is going to go wrong. So you've, you, you've got to be committed to your, your procedure and, and know what's going to happen. So we were at DeVault and, and we decided on DeVault because it had all the type of the terrain that we wanted to test it on. Unfortunately, we didn't get to the sand part, but we went all, all, all Actually, you went up Bobbyan Skiri, and um, you could see the vehicle. It, it went up. Eventually, it got there. And, and when I say eventually, it's because of the, the fact that every now and then you had to wait for that mechanical diff to kick in, to kick in yeah. and give you that push. And, and sometimes, and it looked a little bit violent. Well, you know, you can feel it in the car um, when you're driving. You can actually feel it because the moment, the moment you lose traction on a wheel, you, you know, in theory, traction control should take over and, and you know, assist you to get through. The mechanical diff lock definitely does its job. But again, like I say, it's that commitment from you, the driver, because the moment you come off the gas or floor the car, things, things are not going to happen like you want it to. So you've got to be committed. Maintain that pressure on the, on the accelerator. It'll kick in after a few seconds and we move forward and then we did a new obstacle there as well and that one actually pushed this vehicle's wow. flexibility to, <laughs> wow, yeah. to to a bit and i mean at, at one point the rear was off the ground and as it came back on the front left was off the ground how, how was how did you feel it did, did you feel that it was actually nicely balanced is it because it looks high the buck yeah I certainly didn't feel unsafe. Um, I mean, the, like I say, the vehicle's got a good feeling to it. I certainly didn't feel unsafe about it. Um, again, it's just a, a matter of waiting for that system to work in for you. But um, no, at no stage did I feel unsafe or, or, or that the vehicle's going to tilt over or fall over or anything, no. Okay, so this bucket comes out with mutter ends, and I have to say, um, you, you can't be very talkative once you hit 60 or going over um, but that's not the bucky's fault that's the no, mud terrain yeah. um, would you stick with the mud terrains on this bucky no not necessarily i mean the nice thing about mud terrains it gives you the look um, i mean i've driven many many places of, of mud thick sand rocks things mud terrains i don't think it's totally necessary it looks good on the car and they do their job Number one, obviously their tire life is not as good as a normal um, AT tire. But yeah, no, I would say no, it's not necessary. So if we take this bucket and let's decide we're going to go 
over landing with it. Obviously, this one is nice because it comes in at 643,100 pounds and it's already got the bull bar on. Yeah. Um, you've already got the suspension lift, you've already got the bigger tires that some guys don't have. The roof rack, I don't know if I like the roof yeah, rack. It looks style, doesn't it? It does look a little bit Tuli style, although it's great if you want to put wood on top, but yeah. you can't really put a rooftop tent on top. Okay. Don't have this one. No. Um, but Canopy, there are a couple of guys that does canopies for the Mahindra, so Canopy is available for this. You can get the draw systems. Um, what else would you do with this? Well, the accessorizing it, I mean, like you say, I think it would be more the convenience of accessories that you want to have. is quite capable as it is. Um, you know, typically winches and things like that. I don't, I don't foresee that a winch is a necessity in a 4x4. Um, tires, if, if it comes out with these um, all-terrain tires, like these mud-terrain tires that they've got, then, then so be it. Um, suspension, at this stage, I feel quite comfortable with the suspension. It seems to be working well. And we, we also spoke a little bit earlier about the interior of the vehicle. For me, um, it feels a little bit old. I mean, you, you have a look in front of you, the, the, the instrument cluster, the, there's no fuel consumption. There's, it, it's very basic. It's, it's an odometer, yeah. a trip meter, and it tells you your revs and your, and your speed. Um, there's no real information except for that. Yeah, the ergonomics is there. Everything, everything that you want your radio, um, the speedometer, like you said, it's it's there. It's there for all there. It's even got speed control. But um, you know, if, we, if we always get about fuel consumption, you know, current or average, you've got no idea. Yeah, that would be interesting because they claim it's around about 9.6, 9.7 liters per hundred k's. Um, I wonder is that is still valid with the matter rates? Obviously, uh, definitely not. There's going to be an increase in it. But apart from this, you've got like, little armrests and there's airport in the back. You've got leather seats. Yeah. The, the seating is not too uncomfortable. I, I can see myself doing yeah. six, seven hundred k's in the vehicle. And it's comfortable. Oh, absolutely. I can say the ergonomics is very nice. It's, 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 it's all laid out well. Nothing, nothing, nothing you know, stressful. I mean, obviously, if you want to the key, if you put the key. In, you should even really find you the spot. You with your finger where it is. Well, it's well hidden away down here. But uh, once you've got that sorted out, you know, typically human creatures of habit will get used to it. Um, air conditioner seems to be fine. Typically a big screen radio again. I mean, it seems to be the natural and the norm of new modern cars. Air conditioner, it does all the good things we want. Um, and then, of course, on the off-road side of things, it does have hill descent control as well. And you tested that, how did you feel? It works, it does its, it does its job. Um, Do you feel it's the right speed or you feel yes. felt it was a little bit too fast? The speed, the speed was comfortable. What's interesting, this automatic gearbox in first gear low range maintains enough uh, torque to keep the car back without the, without the hill sync control even working. That's good to know. Now, ride comfort. It is a bit hard, but I presume it's also because we are completely, we've got no load on it. I would assume that if we have got some load on it, drive comfort would be much better. Definitely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, typically with most pickups, they're designed to carry a half-ton load. So, I think the fact of the matter is that it is empty at the moment. Gives us that feeling of it being a little bit more rough. But uh, I don't think that would be the, actually a problem in the sense of, it's a rough car, no it's not. Then just a bit of a disclaimer, we didn't let down the tires. We yeah. kept it at standard tire pressure for road handling. Uh, do you think there would have been a big difference in how the vehicle handled the obstacles if you had the tire pressures down to let's say 1.5 or 1.8? Obviously the deflating tires is the major, major trick in off-roading success in, in negotiating an obstacle. So I'm, I'm going to say yes and no, but yes in the way that the car would have performed well. But I've also driven many cars where I never ever deflate the tires. Like, this is on a training day. I don't deflate mine. So I know how mine operates and I know how it feels through the obstacle. So 
the traction that you will receive by the flight of the tires would possibly have definitely, um, well, not possibly definitely, would possibly have been a lot easier um, for this car to, to maintain front yields. See, it comes to when you get this thing called crossover articulation. That's where the car works at its hardest, when you've got a front wheel with the ground and a back wheel. And that's where, that's where this mechanical diff lock works, but it asks for that commitment. If you for wait a few seconds, and then it kicks in and goes. Well guys, there you hear it from our mouth to your ears. Um, guys, please like, share and subscribe if you like these videos. And um, I'm Anson from Adventure Africa. This is Tony from Adventure Africa Training and Tours. Please follow us on Facebook and uh, yeah, okay. check out the next video.